Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for what I believe is our sixth Austin Classical Guitar Watch Party. I'm so excited to share this extraordinary evening with you. We have a super duper guest tonight um, with us all the way from uh, Ontario, Canada. Um, Jorge Caballero. So I'll be introducing him in just a moment. Uh, he is one of our oldest and best friends here at Austin Classical Guitar. We've done some of our most exciting projects over all these years with him. And certainly the thing we're going to be talking about tonight is, uh, is right up there among some of the most exciting things that have ever happened at ACG. So that's what we're going to be uh, unpacking tonight. Um, I'd like to begin by saying on behalf of everyone here at Austin Classical Guitar. Uh, I hope that you are doing well as this um, very strange time, very challenging and very uh, uh, 
uh, uh, frightening time is continuing on. Um, you know, we are all finding ways to adjust um, and uh, deal with uh, the, the challenges that are presented to each of us individually. I hope that you are doing as well as possible, um, that your families are healthy, um, and uh, that you're finding um, uh, things to get interested uh, uh, in each day, that you're finding uh, moments of inspiration um, and uh, reasons to smile. And I certainly hope if you've been joining us here at Austin Classical Guitar, or if this is your first time with us um, tonight, that, that this will be one of those uh, reasons as well. Um, we've done, as I said, about six of these so far. If you like what you uh, see tonight and you'd like to experience some of the other ones, we've done a show about flamenco India. We've done a show about our, our music and healing program and several others. You can find those on our website, austinclassicalguitar.org. I'd also like to make sure you know about two upcoming events. This coming Saturday night, we have a live concert presentation on our Up Close Online series featuring Tony and Camille, an absolutely charming husband and wife guitar and violin duo. They play beautifully, and we're gonna have a lot of fun Saturday night for that live show. And then on next Tuesday, a uh, week from now at 7 p.m., we're going to have a watch party devoted entirely to our services for detained youth in the juvenile justice system here in Travis County and also in Williamson County. It's one of our most special, most sensitive programs. We've been doing that work for 10 years now in those facilities, in the Travis County facility, almost every single school day for 10 years now and developed some really powerful relationships and seen some amazing results. So we'll have some special guests and some great stories to tell next, um, next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. So if you're interested in either of those, just visit our website, austinclassicalguitar.org, and there's some information right on the front page uh, about those. So the way this works tonight, our guest and I, uh, Jorge and I, are going to talk about uh, this amazing experience we had in October of 2011. We are going to get to see some amazing footage from KLRU that uh, was taken that evening and turned into a television show. So we'll hear some amazing music. We'll talk about it. We'll gain some insights. And all that will happen between now and about eight, uh, 7.50, so about 50 minutes, maybe an hour. And at that point, we will turn to your questions and comments. So I see some of you are already active, but over there on the right side of your screen, um, if, uh, if you've got something you're moved by, excited by, or a question for me or for Jorge, um, go ahead and pop it in there. You can do it anytime into the chat uh, beside the screen there in YouTube. And we'll take a look at those at the end of the show and, uh, and talk through them, make sure we get some of those questions answered. I'm so excited that you are with us uh, tonight and I look forward to reading your comments and questions. So I think it's time to uh, welcome our guest, Jorge Caballero. Jorge, are you there somewhere? Can you appear magically? Just like that. <laughs> welcome, I my friend. Yes. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good to oh, see you. It is just so good to see you too. I am thrilled that we're doing this and I'm just thrilled for an excuse to chat with you. Yeah, it's, it's always, a, I've always thought that it's, always a great time anything having to do with austin at least for me has always been a good time so um yeah i'm happy to be here and um, you know just have this chat with you looks it seems to me like it's been ages in, since we spoke last so yeah. yeah i'm looking forward to this isn't that the truth wow you are well your uh, your family's well as far as uh, uh people close to you yeah, fortunately, we, we are all doing well. Um, as, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we are in Canada right now. That's not my, 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 my typical home, but uh, my wife is from here. So we're just, uh, we're just here all together with my in-laws. So we are actually having a, good, a relatively good time in spite of the difficult circumstances that um, have fallen on all of the world, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's remember together tonight uh, some amazing things that have happened in our history, and it's really such a bright spot. I and mean, each time, as you say, each time I think of the experiences that we've had together have been so much fun. I think it dates back to like 2004, doesn't it? That is right, actually. Uh, you know, and I think I mentioned this to you before, but um, you know, any any time I go to a, a concert or a new situation. I go with a with a very low level of expectations. I basically go and say, "Well, I'm going to do my job, 
play and try to do as the, as best as I can. And you know, let's let's see let's see what happens. But mm. from the very first time that I uh, that I played in Austin, you know, you know, I was so grateful for the organization that that you have put together and mm. the work that you put in, the enthusiasm of your audience, the enthusiasm that you brought in. And, you know, and so, and I was then pleasantly surprised to then be back two years later and then the, and then two years after that, and then the year after that, and the year after that, you know, one after the other, and even more so the fact that every time we continued this, uh, these projects that we, we ended up doing together, they got bigger and bigger. They really did. So, um, yeah. And the Austin Pictures event was one of the largest events that, there has ever been in the history of the classical guitar if you really think about it yeah. so i'm yeah. i'm very thankful and that i got to be a part of it and that we actually did this uh this this whole thing you know so <laughs> and it was so much fun to dream it up um and and really all of those experiences that first show was in a house in 2004 and 2006 um you played uh a beautiful concert for us. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think you played the New World Symphony on the that second half correct. of that concert in That's 2006. Right. Uh -huh. um, I remember uh, you brought a string quartet. We commissioned a new piece from the great Jorge Morel, uh, Songs and Dances, yeah. Uh, yeah. 2009. Um, mm -hmm. And then we, uh, on this concert, we won't hear it tonight, but on this concert, you performed that piece again with the Miro String Quartet. Of course, many That's of us right. in Austin know the yeah. amazing quartet and then came back again to play the Long Center with the Miros as well. After yeah, I think I, I got the feeling that they liked the performance at the concert. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, it was, uh, it was great to actually be able to, to work with them again. And, you know, uh, working with the Miro Quartet is, uh, the only way I can describe it is kind of like a dry, uh, it's like driving a, a luxury vehicle. Mm. You know? So, um, <laughs> you know, basically, basically all you, you sit down, you start working. And from the moment you start working, there's an immediate uh, synergy and chemistry about the, the interaction that, that, that you have. And that's a product of working with musicians as excellent as they are and certainly an ensemble as, as outstanding as they are. So it was it was great working with them, you know, in both in both occasions. So amazing. Well, we're going to get to music here in just a second. I think we better. It's always good to start that way, and then we'll come back and 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 dive in just a little bit further. Um, and so what we've done is we've broken up the uh, the piece. So the piece we're going to listen to tonight is pictures at an exhibition, and that's uh, essentially eleven things, right? It's it's a it's a promenade, the idea of people walking through a gallery of paintings, and then it's ten paintings, ten experiences, True. and 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 the promenade theme sort of comes back throughout, and that's a very famous famous theme, of course, that we'll we'll hear and we'll get to recognize over the course of tonight if you don't already have it um, in your mind. And so, what we're going to hear right now, it's just under ten minutes of music, is we're going to hear the promenade, the famous promenade, which is a sort of a loud and proud uh, 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 kind of opening. And then we're going to get to the first painting, which is called the gnome. And then we hear the promenade theme again uh, after that, if I'm not mistaken. And then we'll hear uh, the second painting uh, in music, which is the old castle. Uh, Jorge, does that sound about right to you? Yes, all of that is correct. Sweet. Okay. Well, I'm ready if you are, unless there's anything else you want people to know. Um, no, I think it's better to just begin with music and see how people react. If they've never heard this piece before, it's always a good thing to just get their, their immediate reaction and not influence the, their reaction you know, by saying something. Basically, stay out of the way first. I will, I will only say then, before we start, that you're in a theater, uh, you're in the brand new at the time, ACL Live at the Moody Theater downtown. There's 1,800 people in the audience. It's being filmed for TV by KLRU and live broadcast at the same time by KMFA. So that's the that's the scene that we're in. Uh, and I think we should go ahead and take it away. Let's listen to this first uh, segment of pictures at an exhibition. Good.
Wow, Jorge. Oh my gosh, that just takes uh, takes me right back uh, to that magical evening. Um, and for those of you joining us late, uh, this is, we've just watched the first of three sets that we're going to see tonight that make up the entire pictures at an exhibition. But we thought we would chat just a little bit on the way through just to help digest all of this amazing music. Um, and so we just heard that the main theme of pictures at an exhibition, the promenade, and we heard this sort of spiky gnome, the, the second, second movement, which is sort of the first painting that, that you encounter in the, in, the, in the exhibition. And we heard the promenade theme again, and then this just spacious, magical um, uh, old castle that just finished. And Jorge, I am just struck by the amount of color coming out of your guitar. Your right hand is moving all over the place. You're making these sweet things and these really spiky things. And it sounds like several instruments are up there all the time. Just amazing. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, you know, I, I have to say, you know, to something like that, a lot of the credit to that is actually is is should go to Yamashita and his arrangement. Kazuhito Yamashita. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, he he received much more criticism about this than he ever deserved. You know, um, if you take the time to study the arrangement and basically try to sort through the problems that it presents as numerous as they are. But if you are able to do it, basically so much of the color that you're hearing is really not the result of any, any inventiveness on my part, but is really the result of me following what's necessary to be able to carry the arrangement to, to a successful execution. So, um, yeah, it, there is. There's just so much, so much in it, you know. That that um, that you know, of course, is difficult to extract because the arrangement is so difficult. But uh, but at the same time, there's something that is very natural about it, in that a lot of the technique that you're supposed to employ is not unusual. In fact, is very traditional. You know, you how to extract a color from a certain range or mm. you know. There are some, uh, you know, interesting new bits like you know this pinching a string process, you know, things like that. But uh, <laughs> you know, so that is really a magical sound that you get out of that. But um, but aside from that, I mean, so much of the uh, the general character and the the variety of characters that are presented and how the guitar is carrying them so successfully is a result of the arrangement. So. Wow. Well, uh, you know, and it's one of those things that if you, if you if you don't play the guitar and if you may be new to the instrument or even not, um, you know, all of that is done on purpose, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, oh, yes. And, uh, um, and uh, you know, and I got to say, there's a moment at the very, very end, not to spoil it, but I don't think we'll probably get into more guitar technique talk after this mm -hmm. uh, part of our chat. But there's a moment at the end when you're doing this ongoing tremolo with your pinky while at oh, the yes. same time doing other stuff with your other fingers and it's all happening at the same time. And so everybody, you have to watch for that when we get to it. <laughs> oh yeah. And those, those, I remember when I, when I was working on, 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 on this arrangement for performance, I, I ran into that and I was thinking, Hey, I kind of worked this out when I was like a teenager, so I should be okay doing this. And then I was thinking, no, you're not okay doing this, you know? Wow. And I had to, I, I, I spent months trying to figure out what was this, what would have been a successful way to actually be able to do that. Because mm -hmm. it's not only the fact that you do that, as you mentioned, there's also other things that you do. So you're rolling with your thumb, but you're also playing artificial harmonics. So it's <laughs> you're, you know, things like that. So just trying to work all that out was, um, you know, was a lot of problem solving on my part, but I like solving problems. So that was, that was a fun thing for me. Very <laughs> cool. Scary as it may have been. So we'll get to look forward to that in the third block of music that we play tonight. We'll actually get sure. to hear hear this thing uh, that, that that we're talking about. Um, so so, uh, what can you tell us just uh, about this piece? I mean, it sort of started out as a piano piece that Mussorgsky wrote, mm -hmm. and um, and it's in it's basically ten paintings, but then there's this promenade theme. So eleven main themes. It's a beautiful example of of art because there's actual art that inspired this music and it's, it's art inspiring music. And then of course it went from being a piano piece to its most famous iteration perhaps, which is, which is pictures at an exhibition as an orchestral piece. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and it's correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the, that Yamashita's guitar arrangement is 
sort of an arrangement of the orchestral version almost. It's like he's trying to bring in those orchestral colors. Uh, or maybe it's just a reinvention for guitar. What, what, what can you tell us about right. that? Well, um, well, there's uh, there's a lot there's a lot that uh, in your question already. You know that mm -hmm. to, that would have to um, unfold. But um, you know, let me let me begin with a little bit about the piece itself. Mm. So, um, pictures and exhibition as a composition goes through a sim a, a history that basically is similar to what's happened to a lot of Mussorgsky's music. And what, what it is, is that uh, Mussorgsky's music didn't really become known in his time. And when it became known, it became known through the hand of someone else. Mm. You know, it's like, uh, so for example, Rimsky-Korsakov uh, was uh, instrumental in, the, uh, in what's known about, say, Boris Goodenough, you know, um, you know, and the opera became kind of a, what had an impact but at the same time, what you heard was not what Mussorgsky wrote in so many in so many ways. You know, there were this. Uh, um, you would say that you know he kind of cleaned up the music to some to some degree, and going to pictures and exhibition, the same thing happened. So the uh, the music was that he wrote, which he wrote in I think 1874, um, and very quickly, you know, a matter of a few months, didn't really become known until Ravel orchestrated it. And uh, which was in 1922, and only then there was an interest for the for the piano original. And as we move through the piano original, then there was also a further interest in how Mussorgsky himself actually wrote it. And so then manuscripts start to appear. And, and Fascinating, you know. So so there's there's a kind of an interesting there's an interesting um, perspective on on. Mussorgsky's music for that reason, because he's kind of, he, the, his music and the way it evolved throughout history always elicited the curiosity of what he actually intended. Mm. And so when you reach it from that perspective, you can see kind of the, so the, the general, the general force of his writing, which is based in so many ways on this, what I would call so, somewhat of a cubist contrast of, uh, of, of elements, you know, um, so to, to give you some ideas from, from what you just heard, you know, the promenade, the original promenade at the beginning is very, sounds very stately, but it's a little bit misshapen. The, uh, the original phrase has 11 beats divided into five and six, hmm. you know, so that's not, even though it's technically a walk, it's not a walk that you could actually assertively say, okay, you know, I'm balancing this walk, <laughs> 11 beats, you know, try, try dancing that, you know, not going to happen, you know, so I'm, um, and then you're, it's followed by this gnome idea that is so disjointed and rough and, 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 and difficult. But then what follows it is this very peaceful, now more regular uh, re-rendition re of the promenade. Mm -hmm. Then followed by this uh, Siciliana, uh, you know, which is the old castle. You know, mm -hmm. um, and that, is, that has to do with the painting. You know, the, the painting that it's inspired from was, uh, was painted at a time when the, uh, Victor Hartmann, the, the painter to whom this piece is dedicated, um, uh, was working in Italy. So, mm. so the Siciliana has the effect to allude to that, to that period of time as well. So there's all these really stark contrasts in the, uh, in the quality of writing. And uh, so that's the first, you know, just to give you some general ideas as to uh, who Mussorgsky was, what he, what he wrote. I and, love it. I and love it. There's a, also an honesty about the, uh, the piece itself in that he, Mussorgsky is basically writing a piece upon the, um, the, the impression that he had for a, whom he considered a good friend, Victor Hartman, and his reaction to him dying. You know? mm. And so... So you can see all of that in, in you know, just- So Victor Hartman is the artist and, yes. and he has passed away. Mussorgsky is writing this as an homage to him and his right. artwork. Wow, I don't think right. I knew that, Jorge. We yeah. better hear some more music if that's okay with you. We'll come back and we'll talk about that art a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So in this next one, we hear that promenade theme again, which is great that we get kind of to familiarize ourselves with it. Then we're going to hear a couple things in a row. We're going to hear um, Children in the Garden at Play, Bidlow, uh, the promenade movement again, uh, Ballet of the Unhatched Chicks, and then Samuel Goldenberg and Schmiel. So um, these are uh, this is the next uh, bit of music that we're going to hear um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of that artwork. Great, let's do it.
Wow, Jorge, what an experience, man. That is, uh, that is um, very deep all the way throughout. That big bidlow as it just grows, it's that huge lumbering movement. And then as you were pointing out, that rest stroke tremolo that's just earth shattering. Oh, um, yeah. Do you have favorite spots in there as, you, as, we, as we go back and listen to it? <laughs> Well, um, you know, it, it depends. I mean, like, you know, let's see, uh, like, you know, talking about the restaurant tremble. So that's a moment where you personally, I have to stay really hyper-focused because uh, the tremble itself is not the difficult part. Mm -hmm. it, it's what's happening with your left hand that you have to pay, that you have to pay attention to. Because when you're push when you're pushing the strings that much, then your left hand has to be really strong to match it, and uh, which is all all fine and good if you're doing something normal. But in there, you have this big stretch stretchy situation. So so you have to really be sharp and stay on your fingertips and make sure that you're pushing them deeply into the fingerboard. And you know, and all of that, of course, is nice and good. Um, you know, if you're in a situation where you're doing something that though you're stretching, you're relatively stable and you're not moving, but then suddenly you have to shift. Right? And mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that you're shifting properly and you're shifting with, you know, lightly, but arriving with a lot of strength, mm -hmm. which is nice and good. Once again, if your shift is relatively, is reasonably, reasonably easy, but then you're shifting all the way to 12, to 12 position. Wow. And, and of course, once you get there, you actually have to start easing off on the tremolo wow. because then the string is not going to tolerate, tolerate the rest of tremolo if you're just banging on it. So you have to stay light, mm. which would be fine and good if you didn't have to jump back to the previous position <laughs> and then do it again. You know, so, so there are these like little things that you have to pay attention to. And when you do them well, then you feel, oh, wow, this actually was great. You know? And so that actually is kind of becomes a, a favorite moment just for the purpose of concentration. Wow. You know, but um, in the Samuel Goldenberg and Shmuel, Shmuel uh, movement, that ending point of it, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. you know how uh, uh, Mussorgsky brings that to is like a really, really like, difficult conclusion. You know, um, yeah. and you know this this kind of like begging moment uh, that 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 is being portrayed and then always quickly abru abruptly interrupted. You know, mm. that's. That's difficult to to play, you know, emotionally. First of all, you have to find the sound, and then you have to also be able to quickly switch the character, you know. And that's something that happens in your hands. So you have to start from here, and then then suddenly get really fascinating. You know, fascinating. You know, change your mood basically. So um, it is amazing that that that's the vehicle, right? It's through the fingertips. It's through those muscles, through the body that we express everything that we're hearing that comes out oh, of the instrument in people's yeah. ears and what an interesting way that we translate it. And, you know, I, you know, we, you were talking about uh, the artist and Mussorgsky and then Ravel and all of these layers of interpretation and separation mm -hmm. and, and then recombination as music and art and literature even travel through time and, in, and inspire new generations inspire other people and 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 how it takes on that new life and and in even this 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 translation through one's one's brain and emotions and life experience out through those fingers into the guitar and into all of our consciousnesses as well um in many ways i think this evening that we're talking about which is october 1st 2011 was a was a huge celebration of of togetherness. Um, if, if you were with us watching uh, um, two weeks ago, you saw the other half of this production, Austin Pictures One, when we, we saw the 115 child orchestra and the Miro Quartet and so many other elements that were happening all this same evening, October 1st, 2011. Um, but one of the other kind of fun things that happened that night was we uh, identified 11 state award winning high school painters. And right. we asked each of them, we assigned each one of them, one of the themes, including the promenade plus the 10 paintings. And we assigned it to them to make their own Austin version, their own Austin interpretation visually. And we actually gave them the snippet of music that pertained to that particular painting. And if we had the original etching, we gave them that too, so that they could base it on. 
And um, so I thought it'd be fun, Jorge, if we kind of looked quickly at those 10, 11 paintings uh, right. before we hear the last little bit of music. Does that sound good to you? Oh, absolutely. Especially because there are, once again, we're kind of talking about this idea of how uh, the, um, the, 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 how art as a means of human expression, how it communicates through time, you know, and it's interesting to see how what they came up with has some resemblance to what uh, a Russian painter in at the end of the 19th century was working on. You know, it's, Extraordinary. You know, it's uncanny, but, um, but that same voice that, that connecting us through time through this piece. Wow. Well, let's go ahead and cue up the first one. Let's look at the uh, look at the promenade here um, yeah. and uh, and just take a little trip down memory lane. Yeah. Uh, one fun yes. thing. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Um, <clears throat> one, one fun thing about uh, this uh, week was that I got an email from the person who won this painting at the auction because we auctioned all of these off to benefit AZG education that yeah. night. And, uh, um, and so the person that won this actually emailed me this week and said, uh, mm -hmm. said, I still have this painting up in my home office and I look at it every day and I love it. But, but here was this young artist's interpretation of the promenade. Um, I, what's this yeah. one do for you, Jorge, when you see it? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's exactly what, uh, exactly what, uh, what Mussorgsky was trying to convey through music, you know, the mm -hmm. idea of like walking through an exhibition the uh, you know pictures and an exhibition as a as a musical work uh, was the result of the exhibition that Mussorgsky attended as a tribute to his friend Vic Victor Hartmann, mm -hmm. and so um, in so many ways it talks about his experience of going, and the first experience that he portrays is the prom the promenade, and mm -hmm. you know the uh, the way the promenade re recurs throughout the piece. And the way the different tempi appear and they're set up, they're meant to mimic the way he walked, which uh, reportedly was not particularly steady. <laughs> so uh, interesting. Because, yeah. Interesting. So um, yeah, there are letters that he wrote to the uh, to the to the music critic for you know that was putting all this together. So um, where he talks about it. So yeah. Wow. Well, let's just take a quick run through each of these because it's worth looking at them again. They're so amazing. These again were all done by by Austin High School students, and this is going to be in order of the of the pieces. So this is the gnome. This is that spiky theme that we heard the first one coming out of the promenade. Oh, man, I and Jorge, you've got a one. special history with this one, don't you? <laughs> oh yes, I love this one when I when you know when when I looked at it for for the first time. You know when I showed up at the theater. Um, was really the first time that I actually got to see all of these. Mm -hmm. And I knew that they were going to be up for auction. So as I was walking around, I started to look at them and, you know, and some of them really, really touched me. And this was one of them. Wow. Baba Yaga was the other one. So, <laughs> even to me to kind of like this really, uh, really difficult ones. And so, um, so I, I started to bid on it once it, it went for auction. And, you know, so I was like, okay, I'm starting here. So I put my bid and then, you know, five minutes later, somebody had outbid me. And <laughs> so I was like, oh no, you didn't. And so I went back and I was like, no, I'm going to outbid. And we were on this bidding, I was on this bidding war. But the problem was that the auction was ending a little bit after my flight going back to New York was taking off. So I was inside the plane still on, on the on the ebay app like you know just like you know, no i'm going to outbid this i'm going to outbid this and then the plane takes off and i'm hearing the flight attendant saying turn off all your cell phones and, oh, and i'm saying no. no i'm not turning off my <laughs> cell phone i'm going to win this painting <laughs> and so i keep going i keep going and you know there were like there's little there were literally two minutes left to the end mm. of the auction and then suddenly poof signal gone Wow. And I could no longer bid. And I arrived in New York. I opened, the first thing I do is open the app and I have lost the bid. And both of the paintings that I, that I, had, that I had solicited. <laughs> so anyway, I was, I was so bummed out by that. And yeah, I remember telling you. Yes, yes. And then there was a, there was a miracle, uh, you know, for Christmas. I remember Santa came to town and Santa's name was Matt Hinsley, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because you know, next thing I know, around Christmas time, I get, I get, uh, I get this large package from you in the in the mail, and I was like, "What is this?" I open it up, and lo and behold, it was the painting. 
it wow. was a gnome and in, wow. so i you know i this is this was not scripted uh so i'm just going to show it here oh wow there it is on your yeah. cell phone yeah we'll come back and look at that in a second because i think right now everybody's seeing the painting but once they're looking at us again we'll show it on on your on your phone uh also um right. Oh my gosh, Jorge. Well, well, thank you for that story. I had so much fun commissioning that young artist to make a second copy of the gnome, which is the one that you right. received for Christmas right. that year. Indeed. And um, so we'll, we'll scoot through these next ones a little bit quicker. Anyone in mm -hmm. Austin uh, recognizes the old castle here. This was this young art, Austin artist's interpretation of the old castle, of course, painting the UT tower um, for the old castle. What else do we have here, Eric? Mm -hmm. Ah yes, there's the uh, there's the uh, children in the garden at play, and we see Austin skyline in the background. I love that sky. Um, how about the uh, how about the wagon? Oh, oh this one's great. <laughs> I just love that massive, you know, yeah. blue elephant on that sure. little radio uh, flyer. Yeah. So cool. That's the yeah, that's the, the great wagon. Yeah. Mm. Um, this was Glenda, my wife's favorite, the ballet of the unhatched chicks. And, mm -hmm. and so um, when, uh, when we recommissioned the one artist to make another gnome, we commissioned the artist Vivian Stevens, who painted this one originally to make a second copy. And that copy is actually in my living room. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, there's the, now, now this is interesting. Yeah, so this is I the also, movement we just heard. Yeah. And yeah, I, I bid on this one too. <laughs> yeah. And interesting that it's similar to Victor Hartman's once again, like, you know, mm. very different setting, but the, it, but the idea is there's an so echo much, there. Yeah, so much. So this is actually downtown Austin. For those of you looking closely, you can see in the background, that's uh, the Ritz uh, Theater. Um, and uh, this particular one is um, is called uh, the Market Square Limoges. Um, and, um, and so this is important now because this is where we're going to pick back up with the music here in a minute. So this is the first thing we'll hear is the musical depiction. And remember that the young artist that painted this painting did so listening to that music. So we gave each artist the specific piece. So we'll hear this one next. This is the market square and then ooh, the catacombs. catacombs. Yeah, and the owner of the catacombs is watching tonight. I saw that in the chat. Um, uh, Robert, uh, uh, watching tonight, said that they've got this one in their home. Um, and then your other favorite, Jorge, Baba Yaga's hut. There it is. Oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> which is such an extraordinary piece of music. Yes. And then the grand finale, which yeah. is the, uh, the great okay. gate of Kiev. And I want all of you Austinites uh, looking at this painting right now to take a second and think about this young artist who got the assignment to paint the Great Gate of Kiev and translated that into the Great Gate of Austin. And as she was trying to figure out what to do, she came up with this idea, which was to paint Barton Springs. And that's what this is. This is a painting of, uh, of Barton Springs downtown. You got to show everybody your screensaver on your phone now, Jorge. Now that we're back on oh, back yes. on the screen, and then we'll listen to some music. Yeah. Um, so there you go. <laughs> that's the gnome. And, yeah, that's the gnome. <laughs> and this has been on my phone um, basically since I got it. it. So that was at the end of 2011, 2012. Amazing. Uh, when I went back to Austin, we uh, I, I met the artist who had painted it, and so um, yeah, he was he was he, he was with his mom and. I, I literally pulled out my phone and said, oh, you got to see this. And, you know, and he was so excited to see, to see his own painting on my phone. It was, it wow. was great. But, yeah, so it's still there and will continue to be there. So. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we are going to listen to the last uh, segment of music. Um, again, this is four movements now or four different paintings. That Market Square, the Catacombs, Baba Yaga's Hut, and then the Great uh, gate of Kiev. And uh, so we'll listen to that and then we'll come back. We'll, uh, we'll answer your questions if you've got some or read some of your wonderful comments. I see a lot of good ones already. And uh, so let's go ahead and listen to the, uh, the, the rest of this piece. Does that sound good, Jorge? Yeah, it sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it.
Oh my goodness, Jorge. I mean, it's just glorious. It's so glorious. It's so huge. You, you just, it's like we were talking about one person, one guitar in this massive cavernous space that you were in and you have just, you know, filled, filled that space right here in my, uh, in my heart and in, in for everyone watching tonight with that incredible performance. Um, Thank what, you. Uh, how does it feel to watch that again? Uh, well, you know, I was, I was reminded of, uh, you know, a couple of things, you know, I'll, I'll start with one that was actually kind of funny. It was the fact that the, the theater was very cold. I think they had, I actually asked, they had the, uh, the air conditioning setting at 59 degrees. We're real good at that here in Texas. <laughs> yeah. You, you like things frosty. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, so I remember before the right before the performance, I actually had to run a couple of laps around around the backstage area <laughs> to just warm up because <laughs> I was I was really cold. Uh, but um, you know, so I survived I survived the cold of the of the <laughs> the Austin City limits theater. But um, that was one. But you know, the more you know, profound experience that I had was before the show started. You know, after everything was being said, I remember. I walked to the stage and just looked from the stage into the hall. Mm. And for those of you who are not musicians and don't have this experience, you know, you, the moment when you walk into such a large place and you're staring from the lights or facing directly at you to, the, uh, to an audience, to where an audience is going to be, you see absolutely nothing. All you see is a void space. Mm. You know, now, usually as a guitarist, you play in recital halls, so you can kind of get a sense of proportion. But when a theater is as large as this theater was, you don't get that. What you feel is a complete void, and mm. you feel really small. Mm. You know, I, I remember feeling feeling like I was standing in the middle of the Grand Canyon and just looking looking in, into it. You know, wow. that's, that's how, that's how small you feel. Wow. And it's at that moment that you actually say to yourself, you know, I'm really small and I have to be able to deliver this. You know, wow. So, so you better, wow. so, and so you, I remember saying to myself, so you better equip yourself and stand there and do it mm. you know, and figure out, figure out how to do this. Wow. And so those are those are moments that uh, that really, as a musician, are the moments that really build your character. Mm. You know, they, that the ones that make you stronger, they, that you know, give you great lessons that you can take with you as you progress throughout your career. You look back on those moments and you are thankful for the fact that you had them. That you had to run a couple yeah. of laps backstage before yeah, coming so, <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, not the first, not the only time that I had to do some laps. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> oh, all right, we've got a, a couple of real nice comments and a, and a couple of uh, greetings from you. I see a, um, I see a greeting from uh, Jorge Caballero. Saludos desde Peru, felicitaciones. Oh, wow, says, I have a namesake over there. You huh? do. I see Maria Obregón says, great performance. So, so proud of you, Jorge. Hugs and kisses from Peru. OMG, that is my mother. <laughs> I thought it might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, count on my, count on my mom to be my fan. <laughs> I love it. I was just yeah. watching an amazing video of her that she posted for Mother's Day. Oh, and yeah, yeah. It was a wonderful <laughs> uh, TV show, I guess she was singing uh, yeah, on. Yeah, was, it was a live performance that was televised, you know, and, you know, my mom was, you know, this is a, a fact that not, not on, some people know, but my mom was a, a very, very famous uh, singer in Peru, yeah. and she worked on television from the early 1970s into the 80s. So um, this show that I posted is just a snippet of, uh, of something, but you can really see, you know, her total command of the, command of the of audience of stage, yeah, of yeah, stage yeah, and yeah. also just how beautiful her voice is. And, you know, that, you know, for there's so much authority, so much lightness about it. There's, mm. yeah, there's elegance, you know, so. Yeah, so whenever whenever I was faced with these types of situations, like the ones I mentioned, I always look back to those times when I would see my mom standing in front of twenty thousand people, wow. and uh, and just basically delivering delivering music. And so mm. uh, this is something that 
inspires me and pushes me to mm. be better at what I do. You know, mm. So, so uh, hi, mom. I hope you're doing okay. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. For the comment. oh, how beautiful. Uh, you have another uh, uh, um, a fan from Brazil here. Uh, Jorge, miss you here in Brazil. Looking forward to a next opportunity to listen to you on Movimento Violão. Oh, Movimento uh, Violão. Uh, oh, great. Uh, that would be, uh, that's Paulo Martelli. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, um, I, don't, I don't know if, he did, I don't know if you ever had him at, uh, in Austin, but Paulo is a fine, fine guitarist. And wow. He, I remember him from my, from my time when I was first a student at Manhattan, Manhattan School. He was going to Juilliard and uh, we we became friends and you know he eventually he moved back to brazil he brought me back to brazil through his series movement of Milan. and uh it's a great it's a great series it, mm. it's basically all of their events are televised they you know and so you know so i've been on television in brazil because of him and played wow. in brazil a, a bunch because of him and he also plays the um an 11 string guitar where cool. he plays primarily Baroque music, Bach specifically, and he does it really well. You know, mm. so um, yeah, so fine, fine now, guitarist, someone I respect a lot. Now I have to say, the name I actually see here is Neil Yonamine, ah. um, and so that maybe he's a fan of Paolo's series. Um, uh, maybe I saw yeah. you on one of those TV shows or saw you live mm. there. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm gonna have to I have to bug you about Paolo's uh, contact info. Eleven string guitar sounds oh, like a good deal. Absolutely, I definitely. But Neil, I remember Neil uh, as well. Yeah, from Fantastic. my time there. Yeah, I love it so yeah, much. Thanks, Neil. Um, well, so I am seeing a lot of amazing comments, and I'm going to read a few of these comments as well. But now is your big chance. If you've got any questions for the great Jorge Caballero, um, now is uh, now is your big chance uh, to. Uh, to ask them, um, I will say we, we've got uh, a comment here saying, uh, hearing your explanations of the intricacies of performing uh, made listening to the ex experience even more meaningful. So that's a really nice, uh, nice comment just about this, um, this evening. And uh, Martha Hilly says, um, if I'd just been listening to this and not seeing you, I could not have believed it was a single guitar. Um, so uh, oh, that's nice. Um, and Neil has just clarified. He said he studies with part Paolo. So uh, that's right. So, yeah, yeah. so that's <laughs> a uh, then now we're seeing it all um, uh, come together. Um, and, and John Nguyen said, "Wow, the tonal color palette is astoundingly large and beautiful. What a pleasure to listen to Jorge's playing." And John, that's it. I just I can't agree more, man. That what's a that's that's a great comment. And this piece just just give so many opportunities to really appreciate your abilities in that regard, Jorge, and, and just, just what the guitar can do. I mean, who knew that it had so many colors? Right. Yeah, that's the that's more like it to me. It's what the guitar is capable of doing. I, mm. I think as a as a musician, you know, what I was what I was taught and you know what was a you know the, the inspiration that I received was the idea that as a performer, your job is to make the instrument speak, you know? mm. not for you to in, introduce or force your own opinion on, on the music that you're going to play. But basically try to play the, you know, but basically try to convey music in as neutral a manner as possible, mm. uh, where you're just basically being the medium by which sound is being carried out of an instrument and then you have to make the instrument speak in it with its most beautiful and eloquent voice possible. And so um, if any color that you hear out of the guitar, you know, you know, I'm, you know, of course the work that I do is just to be able to produce that, to make sure that the guitar sounds as well as it can, you know, so, um, Extraordinary. Yeah, so I'm glad that people can hear that and, you know, enjoy what a guitar is able, able to do. You know? Absolutely magnificent, man. You know, I think that might be the perfect way for us to uh, to go out of this show. It's been about an hour and 20 minutes and uh, mm -hmm. and just filled with beautiful insights uh, from you, my friend, and some wonderful memories and, of course, extraordinary music. And uh, and what a what a wonderful night that was. Such a pleasure to share it with all of you. 
um, and, uh, and, uh, and to share it with you again, Jorge. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of course, I am one part of this big equation of bringing music to people. You know, the other part is everything that you did and what Austin uh, Guitar Society did. You know, if it weren't for if it weren't for the efforts that you had, you know, none of this would have been possible. And so, going back to the memories of uh, what was what was accomplished that night, you know, I think you know, a, you know, the biggest congratulations go to all of you, and all the effort, like I said, all the wonderful work that you've done throughout the years. So, uh, hope that you know, sometime in the future, we're able to put something together again, bring beautiful music to more and more people. <laughs> and then you know we get to talk about it later. And, uh, and yes, I appreciate yes. what's going on. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you talk about um, uh, later. I, I just I just got another question, and I like it so much. If you don't mind, Jorge, we'll take we'll take just another minute or two and, sure. and ask about this one. It says it, it's a big one. It says, "Why do you believe this music after so many years moves us?" And what does it mean uh, when it was written? What does it mean in 2011? And and what does it mean and now? I mean, just just I guess music over time. And uh, mm -hmm. um, do you have any 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 thoughts to that? Yes, of course. Uh, you know, why is music relevant, or why uh, or you know, you know the uh, you know the the simple answer to why any uh, music could be relevant. You know what is simply the fact that it is a means of, of humans to leave a legacy of, of thought that uh, can carry itself throughout the centuries. You know, when, uh, when humans launched the, uh, the Voyager missions, they put a record in those, in those, uh, in those, mm -hmm. two, in those two crafts you know and what did they have well they had some uh, they had some interesting genetic information um they had some scientific information but the other thing that they had was what the language and the different languages of humans of humanity and music <laughs> and so um now these things as they travel through will continue to carry themselves you know in the hopes that at some point and this was what was it hoped that if should there be some civilization that care that that finds this is going to be able to decode this and find what uh, is quintessentially one of the greatest things that we have as humans our mm -hmm. ability to communicate our thoughts and our feelings throughout centuries throughout generations just like um just like in the times of Shakespeare, where he writes and his and his works still speak to us, you know, centuries later, mm -hmm. through, the, through those through of the of the same human emotions, you know, when uh, Mussorgsky writes this piece, he's talking to us of something that we can very easily relate to, you know, the impression that the, his feelings about a friend, someone whom he admired so greatly, having passed away at a young age, unexpectedly, and how he feels about it. And that honesty with which he writes is what is, commu what communicated, what is communicated through his music and what communicates throughout the decades and possibly throughout centuries and hopefully millennia. Mm. And us as musicians, we see that and we feel that desire to communicate that Mussorgsky had and we provide the vehicle by which this can carry itself. And as you, the listener, is listening to this, is also feeling that communication. Mm -hmm. And that memory is the lesson that we learn. But ultimately, that lesson is not only Mussorgsky's lesson, it's your lesson, it's my lesson, it's everybody's lesson. Mm -hmm. And that will continue to perpetuate the human race forward and continue to evolve it's thinking to hopefully a greater degree of enlightenment. Jorge, thank you so much for being with us. Um, it's beautiful to have you with us. I can't wait till we get to do the uh, the real thing um, together yes. again. But uh, but until then, we'll keep doing stuff like this. Um, you're one of my heroes, my friend. 
Uh, so are you. I'm so glad we've been able really to appreciate this journey. Really appreciate the time. So. Thank you all so very much for joining us. Thank you to our incredible production team, uh, Jess Griggs and Eric Pearson are running the show for us behind the scenes tonight. And of course the entire ACG team, Joe Williams uh, and uh, everyone on the programming side and also Sal and Karen and James um, and uh, Siad, uh, everybody who makes uh, what we do possible here uh, possible. Um, and uh, to all of you for watching, come back and see us soon. We got a live show with a beautiful guitarist and violinist on Saturday night. And then next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. right here, we'll be uh, talking about our work in a juvenile uh, justice systems uh, with kids. There's some incredibly beautiful stories there. And if you're interested in either of those shows, just go to austinclassicalguitar.org, sign up for our newsletter, come see us anytime we're here making things to help, uh, help put smiles on people's faces. Um, thank you, Jorge. Thank you. Good nice. night to all. Good night. <laughs>